I'm here with Paul Scanlon, co-founder of Legion M, talking about his new company. Paul, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Paul. Nice to meet you and uh, happy to be here. Now, tell us about the company, how the inspiration to start it came about. What is the elevator pitch for your company? Sure. So, Mo our Legion M is uh, world's first fan-owned entertainment studio. So, what does that mean? Well, it means we're partnering with some of Hollywood's top producers to create TV shows and movies that we're allowing the fans to own a piece of from the get-go. So we're, it's sort of like crowdfunding, but it's equity-based crowdfunding. So it's like Kickstarter to the next level. In our case, you'd be investing in and funding a slate of projects within Legion M. And Legion M will be working with our creative allies, which include some of the top producers like yeah. Seth Green and the team behind Robot Chicken, 42 Entertainment, Meltdown, Alamo Draft House. We've got, you know, real heavy hitters and, and people with a proven track record to help us create uh, the next projects. Now, can you share your earliest memories of being touched by fandom? When did you first discover you were a quote-unquote geek? Uh, I think it might have been uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, that would have been, God, I was probably five or six years old when, uh, <laughs> when that came out, and I remember just being completely taken by it. <laughs> now, we see from your website that you have a few different creative allies. Can you tell us about the project that you have coming up with them? Well, we haven't announced the specifics on the projects, but what I can tell you is uh, in the next couple weeks we'll be, we'll be sharing more uh, details on that. Uh, in the meantime, I can tell you, you know, a little bit about the creative allies. So we've got Stupid Buddy Studios on board as one of our allies. They're the, they're the creators of Robot Chicken, Super Mansion, WWE. They do some hilarious content. Um, we've got 42 Entertainment. This is a genius mind behind the Why So Serious campaign that helped introduce the Dark Knight. Um, also, the I Love Bees uh, campaign introducing uh, Halo. Um, and we've got Alamo Draft House, which is uh, an amazing um, and fastest growing uh, theater chain. Uh, and we're excited to have them on board because they've got expertise in, in not only feature film development, but they're the hot hand in distribution as well. Uh, and then we've got Meltdown Entertainment, which is the sort of nerd capital of LA, I guess, with um, you know one of the biggest comic book stores and a studio in the back where the Nerdist came out of, uh, Meltdown with Jonah and Kamel, uh, a lot of really cool um, uh, stuff happening there, and they're really kind of tightly woven into the comic space and, and with that uh, demographic. Now, a follow-up question, talk about Meltdown. One of our staff writers, he's been to Meltdown Comics quite a few times, and he's been to a lot of shops in his 40 years of collecting. He says Meltdown is completely unique, among other things, the old creative workshops, sell art supplies, instructional books, and of yep. course, tons of comics and graphic novels, novels as well as having an open, night, open mic night where artists can share their passions. Is this outside the box, eclectic approach, and an example of your approach? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, this is why we've had such a nice mind melt with Meltdown. And if you look at all of our partners, I mean, it's really kind of a, a common denominator. I'm glad you bring it up. I mean, Meltdown truly is pushing the boundaries of what it means to be a comic book store. And and because they're looking at it from a fan, fan perspective and knowing that fans want these things. They want courses. They want to understand how things get done. They want to come and meet the meet the creators. Uh, if you look at Alamo Draft House, they're the exact same thing. They put fans at the center of the movie-going experience. They're cinephiles. They care about the movie-going experience and they're, they're, they want to improve it. They're not these big cinema you know, complexes that you find in malls that have no personality. You go to an Alamo Draft House, you're there to watch a movie. They're going to curate the movies and bring just the best movies in. Um, also with Stupid Buddy Studios, I mean, they're, they're, they've been known for not just the great content that they develop, but also the coursework that they've created and teaching people how to do stop motion and allowing people to submit work to them. These are all the things that kind of are meaningful to us. We want to grow a legion of people that are involved, not just as investors, but as passionate fans that can share, you know, a common ground and learn from each other. And we create this community that can take over Hollywood, but also you know, create a lot of fun and enjoyment, you know, between us as we're doing it. Now, talk about your background. What is your background in Hollywood, and what are some of the more notable projects you or your team has worked sure. on? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, my background is 16 years ago, I started a company called Moby TV, and that was a technology company that morphed into an entertainment company, and uh, 
We were the uh, uh, original pioneers of uh, putting tele putting te television content on phones and tablets and now PCs. And at that time, actually, Hollywood told us we were crazy. No one wanted to watch content on their on these devices. And you know, we had a vision. Three years after we launched that company, we won an Emmy from the Television Academy from the same group of people that told us we had a bad idea. That were celebrating us for our our victory and for the innovation of creating an entirely new category which you know fast forward to today there's no question about people watching content on their phone or tablet yeah. or whatever device it's everywhere and so through that experience I mean we got to know a lot of the Hollywood industry I and mean, we were licensing content we were buying content we we're creating channels we we're you know doing all of these things and so you know my co-founder and I he started he and I started Moby TV together I'm still on the board of Moby TV and involved um, but this is our next gig and this is this is something we're both full-time. We've been financing it ourselves and through friends and family. Uh, and we, now we want to go out to fans, let them participate, own a share alongside of us and Seth Green and all these other uh, great creators to go, you know, create kick-ass content. Now, speaking of the fans and contrib contributors, in a nutshell, what is the process for how they'll be able to help make creative decisions for the company? Yeah, so, I mean, creative decisions, you know, we really want to leave up mostly to the to the creators, right? We don't want to interfere with their process. We're getting behind them because we believe in them and we support them. Uh, but there are also a lot of opportunities for them and us to, to go out to the Legion and get feedback on things. And so we're gonna leave that pretty much up to the creators as to you know what level of involvement. Um, but it'll be highly suggested that they, you know, that they involve the Legion from day one and they keep them informed. Uh, we'll be doing live streams from the set, we'll do online hangouts where you can ask questions with the director or the cast. Um, and you know, this is part of what we're engineering the company to do, to manage a legion of shareholders that want to have a voice and interacting with a creator that wants to tap into that, that legion and ask them things. I mean, we, one of the things that we've learned is that when we're out there talking to even guys like Guillermo del Toro, you know, he's, he's an incredibly creative guy. He's got a proven track record. I mean, he's one of my personal heroes. And he also likes the idea of having access to a legion of people that he can he can get feedback during the creative process. He doesn't see that. I mean, of course, it, it's all in how you manage it, right? He doesn't want to get notes from a legion of people on, right. on dailies or anything like that, but or on the script. But he does like the idea of having access to them. And so, you know, this is this is the balancing act. All you, you know, we all know that great art isn't created by committee, um, but having a legion of people involved and giving advice and, and giving feedback can improve that process if we manage it properly. Now, will the contributors be allowed to do screening or test audience participation? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we you know we know that a lot of the people that are getting involved in the legion are also in the industry or want to be in the industry, want to understand it better. Um, we want to create a job board, we want to create a community board where, you know, we also are going to be looking to the Legion itself to help us, you know, discover the next Guillermo del Toro. I mean, at one point he was an unknown, right, right. until he put Kronos out and then, you know, he instantly set himself in. I think having a, a Legion of eyes and ears on the street to help discover those, those talents is, uh, can be beneficial. Now, is there a particular genre of movies, TV, and entertainment that you want to focus on before moving to others? Well, I mean, we're launching a, you know, we launched at Silicon Valley Comic Con, and this is where we're, where we do most of our sort of in-person, you know, presentations. And, you know, the reason we do that is because this is where you find the world's most passionate fans. And so, you know, that's a guiding pole for us. You know, it's a guiding light that, you know, we want to create content that, you know, that fits in in a, in a kind of, you know, Comic-Con type setting. We're looking at comic books and graphic novels as our inspiration. Um, and we're, uh, you know, we, we like horror, we like sci-fi, we like superhero, we like, you know, all those, all those genres. So that's kind of directionally where we're headed. Now, what's a personal dream project, or is there one that your team is anxious to jump on? Maybe a specific actor, probably, that you can share with us? Well, I mean, my dream would be to work with Guillermo del Toro okay. someday, but, uh, you know, other than that, I think, you know, one thing I would say is, like, we already have our dream, you know, is, is partly coming true. I mean, we have access now, and we're working on projects that are, that are really, truly significant, and working with even, you know, the Stupid Buddy Studios. I mean, we're huge fans of their content. I mean, I think they're some of the most creative minds in television right now, and, 
you know, being able to work with them to create the next robot chicken, that's, that's pretty damn exciting. <laughs> And we noticed from your website that you're not currently accepting submissions. What's the estimated timeline for that to open up for consideration? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's something that we absolutely want to do. We want, you know, participants and even outside the outside the Legion to be able to submit projects to us. Uh, but we don't want to do that until we're, we're in a position where we can actually look at it and, and, and ingest it and, and get feedback on it. Right now, we're in phase one, which is growing the Legion and getting the finance together and kicking off our first project. After that, we'll be looking for more projects all the time, and that's when we'll open up that submission space. And what's the vetting process for that? The vetting pro process? Press for submission, sorry. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So we've got an executive team. We've got a team of people that have um, you know, a proven track record in, in the development process. And it's also where our creative allies come to bear. So it's a feature film in the genre category. We're going to be involving Alamo Drafthouse in, the, in those decisions. Um, if it's a TV series going into cable and it's stop motion, we're going to be involving the, you know, the, the Stupid Buddy Studios guys. But, you know, one thing that I would say is as we, as we you know, take in and, and review these projects to the extent that we can, we also want the Legion's feedback and input. You know, it's not like we expect all of the Legion to be reading scripts all weekend, but to the extent that we can use the Legion to help us uh, give feedback on, you know, a number of projects that we're, we're sifting through to give us kind of preliminary guidance on, yeah, this looks good, including the, the idea of, you know, creating a, like a festival, our own festival where, you know, the Legion can help us curate that festival and then we can have celebrities come in like Guillermo to, you know, award, award people. Kind of like your own independent film festival. Absolutely, yeah. An independent film festival festival where the fans have a have a vote and are involved in. Now, from concept to completion and then distribution, what's the ideal birth cycle for a project within your company? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it depends on the project, you know. Like the VR project that I alluded to earlier, I mean, that has a quicker turnaround. I mean, we could be, you know, we're already in the early phases and getting agreements and working with agents on that now. Um, but I could see us having our first couple episodes in, in the fall. Okay. But a movie, you know, a feature movie might take longer. TV series, it depends. You know, we'll probably need to do a pilot and then, you know, um, maybe get to full season. So you mentioned the first part of will roll out later this fall? Yeah. Okay. And what do you think will be the most challenging part of your job? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's one of the things that a lot of people point to and say, oh, you know, you really want a million shareholders? And, you know, our answer is, yeah, absolutely. We want a million shareholders. And we know that's going to be a nightmare. We know it's going to be hard to manage. But it's it's also nirvana in a way. It's what, what can... It's the source of our superpower. You know, if we want to be successful, I mean, one of the one of the companies that we look up to and that we think has done a good job is Legendary. You know, they've done a good job of kind of staying true to the fans and understanding the fans. And, you know, they're not perfect, but they've done a good job and they've been very successful. We want to create the next Legendary that's owned by the fans. Okay. We feel like we can be even more successful than they are. And we don't want to be owned by some Chinese, you know, uh, <laughs> billionaire. We want to be owned by fans. Now, what's the idea, what is an ideal situation in terms of a wildly successful project? Sorry? Sorry, what is an ideal situation in terms of a wildly successful project for Legion M? Well, I think, you know, it depends, again, on the, on the, um, on the project. I mean, a feature film, you know, a wildly successful project would be something that we can get produced for a few million bucks with some top talent uh, and get theatrical distribution and blow it out and make a massive success out of it. For a TV series, it's something that we can you know, that we can option and, and get developed into a uh, sizzle and then go directly to a series, uh, to a season. Now, go back to the beginning of Legion M, how was the idea for Legion M conceived? Yeah, so it's um, it's really the culmination of multiple things. I and mean, we started with Moby TV, we grew that company, had great success with it. About seven years ago, we spun another company out of Moby TV called New York Rock Exchange. That company is really about, in the music space, bringing uh, fans to the same side of the table as the artists that they support. So it's a, it a, lot, it's a, a product that the, that the bands and artists sell to their fans, which is a song share. They can own a piece of a song and get their name on the copyright and have all those things. Now the challenge was that the SEC didn't allow us to, those individuals, to collect royalties because most bands aren't 
filing SEC disclosures or having audited financials. Um, we think that can change over time, but we realized during that process that it didn't matter, that fans still wanted to buy those shares anyway. And now, with you know, with the Jobs Act actually completing the circle, it gives us the opportunity to go out to fans to do this in the entertainment world with feature films and movies and TV shows where fans can actually own an equity stake that's tradable, that gives them upside, all those things. And so we feel like this is, this is a big opportunity right now. Now, um, in terms of um, studios, has your company had any negative experience with studios not trusting your company's concept? I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. Have you had any negative experience with studios not trusting your company's concept? No, I mean, what, what I would say, I mean, this is interesting because with Moby TV, we were, you know, Hollywood is very honest when they don't <laughs> like something. And so we found that to be painfully true with Moby TV, but we proved them wrong. And right. three years later, we're <laughs> celebrated for it. But in this case, one of the interesting things, I mean, not everybody gets it right away. And a lot of times, you know, the initial feedback if we're meeting with a Hollywood exec or a studio exec or an agent will be, oh yeah, I know crowdfunding, I'm not interested in it. I'll say, oh, okay, well, wait a minute. This isn't exactly crowdfunding as you know it. It's not Kickstarter, it's not Indiegogo. Um, this is, you know, and then once we, once we go through the explanation, usually by the end of the meeting, it's, wow, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And, you know, like I said earlier, I mean, we're, we're getting calls from guys like Guillermo del Toro and Stan Lee and, you know, Morgan Freeman calling us. And, I mean, these guys don't need money. They don't need money, but they like the idea of having fans invested in their projects. Right. Because that, not just good fun for the fans and good, it's good business. It makes sense that when we're introducing a movie, to have a legion of fans that have a financial investment and an emotional investment in this project, that can be absolutely a massive differentiator. Now, I know you were at, as you mentioned, Silicon Valley, where, where you guys debuted, and then you're yeah. out here at Phoenix Comic Con. What's the next convention ske schedule for your company? Well, well, we'll definitely be at San Diego okay. uh, Comic Con. As and, we will. We yep, will. of course, your hometown. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, as far as that, uh, I don't know that we have any other, you know, concrete plans as of now. But uh, if you go to the legionm.com, we'll have all that stuff on our website. Okay. And do you have any final words for our viewers? No, the only thing I would say is, you know, this is the opportunity to get in at the ground floor in a production studio that's going to do some cool stuff. And, you know, the, the source of our superpower is our Legion. So, you know, if you're interested, and this sounds interesting, we don't expect anyone to invest their, you know, life savings. We're $100 is the minimum, you know, investment. Of course, some people are investing more than that, but, you know, we're, we're totally fine either way. Um, but then tell your friends and let's get other you know fans excited about it. the bigger we get the more influential we can be the bigger the projects the more you know interesting it'll get thank you for your time paul yep thank you